7th and 8th grade. It's Harry Pedigo tuning back in to talk with you guys. Um, first, I'm going to talk to everybody, 7th and 8th grade. I um, hope the articles are doing good. Um, and after I talk to you guys as a whole, I'll talk more specifically to the 8th graders about what's going on in the Iliad. So by now, you guys, if you played your cards right, which I hope that you have, you have probably started work on your articles and newsletters, right? And you hopefully have spent some time really thinking about having a coherent point to get across in your article so you can stay on track and minimize the amount of chaos and, you know, um, and, and difficulty in your writing. Having that idea and, and spending some time pre-writing on it really will help. What I want to talk with you all about today real quick is um, how we can practice identifying the point of an article or a, a written work. I think that if we pay close attention to that in our reading, in our AR reading, that we can start to see how authors have a point that they want to get across and how they do that in their, in their writing. And that can help train our minds to have a clear focus on a um, on the on the, the the point, the goal of your writing. So what I would encourage you guys to do, I'm going to show you a method. I know we can't mark in our um, in our school books, but you could easily do the same thing that I'm about to show you with um, with your with your um, index cards, with your um, post-it notes, whatever. So what I'm going to show you, what I do um, when I'm, as, as a college student, you know, over at Xavier, I have to do a lot of reading. And one of the things that I'll do, I'll show you, there's two books I'm going to show you, that, um, that ultimately, this is a good example, here we go. This really helps me figure out what is the point of the chapter I'm reading or the book I'm reading, and I identify the main points, right? So I'll show you what I do. So I take, for instance, um, a book like this. You can see how much highlighting I do, and I'll find a part that seems important. It really is, you know, about a particular subject. Um, this one I wrote hiding in the, in the margin there, because it's about the idea that this character is hiding from something. And that's a reoccurring theme in the book, and I want to make sure I track that, because the author is clearly trying to get across that that character is hiding, and you know he or she must be hiding for a reason, right? It's important for us to, to identify that's the direction. I wrote over here, ego, that this person has a big ego. So I'll go through it, I'll keep on doing that. I'm going to move forward here, and I'll see... I'll see, uh, I wrote down this one, the theme of death pops up on this page. So if I was going through, oh look, oh, it pops up and again on this page, the next, very next page. So clearly that was a important part, death again, right here. So that's clearly um, something that you can use in your own writing. Try to identify the point of the chapter, the paragraph, the sentence, the book, whatever. Try to identify what the author is trying to get across. That'll help you recognize that in writing and ultimately give you a better idea of how to do that in your own writing. Because as we see in that book I just showed you, the themes, they're very clear throughout the entire novel. The same thing with um, my favorite book is, um, is Donna Tart and The Secret History. My favorite, favorite book, Iliad. Being up there too, close second. But you see the, the same thing in Donna Tartt's writing. She's a very, I mean, this is a long, long novel, man. Um, this, on the very beginning of the novel, this story is kind of a weird one, but um, the long story short is that these kids in school kind of end up being in a class that kind of has like a cultish kind of vibe and some bad things happen. But I wrote that down, cult. Because that's a major theme, and we see how Donna Tart brings it up again and again a couple pages later. And I'm tracking themes. I'm tracking ideas in, in, in the, her writing so that I can understand better where the novel's going. And you need to do the same thing in your own writing. I would recommend you do that um, with your AR books. Make a note at the end of each chapter that this, this was about 
um, this theme or this, I kept on seeing this theme pop up. It'll really help you identify direction in writing. Okay, good luck with that, guys. Uh, eighth grade, we're talking today uh, about sort of the conflict that is going to happen on the battlefield to give both parties a, um, a little breather. We know that there's going to be a duel, and we know that Hector is the Trojan champion, but we know that the, the, the Achaeans have been kind of um, not so eager to fight. And so what we see happen, I'm talking today about pages 113 through 116. And you're going to see a lot of combat in these pages. It's going to be a lot of combat, and we're going to be kind of introduced to an interesting character uh, who I think has been briefly mentioned, but this is his first real moment to shine in the Iliad, Ajax. And you see that he's mentioned on page 113, kind of the tail end of that page. We see them do something on page 113 where they, they have a stone and they, they put their initials or name on it. They're really kind of um, casting lots. It's like, you know, a lottery, right? And you think about they would put their names in there. It's like how, you know, how the fish fries, we have the, the, the tickets, the raffle tickets. It's the same thing. That's how they're going to choose their champion. They're going to leave it up to fate in a strange way. So that's a theme that we see. They're leaving this up to fate. And ultimately, the person who is chosen is Ajax, a fierce warrior. I want to look real quick at page um, 114, lines 190 through roughly 196 slash 197. So what happens? Ajax is chosen and by fate, and he um, all the men pray to Zeus, which is interesting because um, because we know that Zeus favors the Trojans. But there's an interesting prayer that they they give here. Check this out, gang. Um, so. The idea of equal glory. They pray that both warriors will have equal glory on the battlefield. Basically that if Zeus loves Hector, well, maybe just make sure that Ajax doesn't get totally, totally killed. And then the next bit is all about, um, all about combat, you know, and they're getting ready to, um, to start fighting one another. And they start doing that on page 115. If you could read through 116 today, that would be lovely. And we're going to see how it's really it's an excellent, excellent dialogue about um, ancient Greek combat. But um, ultimately, we know that they're going to have equal glory. So the major theme of this reading is fate and the way that the, the Greek champion was selected. And equal glory, equal kleos, that these men are both... They're both champions in their own right, and they was kind of um, the Achaeans think to themselves, you know, well, we'd rather if he can't be a champion, if he can't win, then at least have them have a draw, right? Because we don't want them to be hurt, we don't want them to be harmed, we want them to have equal glory, which is an interesting thing to think about in our own lives, you know, not being so cutthroat, not being so um, aggressive, not doing things at the expense of others. So think about that in your reading, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.